Hey guys, here's a code for this problem from today's contest. Imagine you're given an integer s and an array of n integers. And for each of the n minus 2 inner elements, you have to choose two integers, xi and yi, such that two conditions hold. Number one, xi plus yi equals ai, the ith element, and xi minus s times yi minus s is greater than or equal to zero, where s was the integer that was given at the start. Now, the goal is you have to try to minimize the sum a1 times x2 plus y2 times x3 plus y3 times x4 plus all the way to y n minus 2 times x n minus 1 plus y n minus 1 times a n by choosing x i n y i's optimally for every a i. What is the minimum value of this expression that you can get? Now, if you look at this problem, this looks like a lot of maths and it's pretty confusing. So let's break it down. Let's look at the expression that we have to minimize. Since x i n y i are related, Let's just take a look at some two consecutive terms of this expression. Assume in the optimal solution there is something like q times xi plus yi times p. Without loss of generality, assume q is larger than p. Of course, if it's the other way around, uh, we can just flip them and there's a symmetric argument. Now, since q is larger than p and xi plus yi is ai, so it's fixed, we can kind of see that we want xi to be as small as possible because we don't want many q's because q is the maximum, the q is the larger one. And we want yi to be as large as possible because we want more small things to minimize the sum. Now, why is this true? Well, since this is the optimal solution, let's for contradiction say that in this optimal solution, xi is not the minimum and yi is not the maximum then that means that we can decrease xi, so let's decrease it by 1. And because we decrease it by 1, we need to add 1 to yi, because to keep the sum constant. And now we get the expression q times xi minus 1 plus yi plus 1 times p. And if you factor it out, it turns into q times xi plus yi times p, which is the previous uh, thing we had, plus p minus q. Now, this expression increased by p minus q. But because p is smaller than q, because q is larger than p, this means that p minus q is negative, hence it decreased. But wait, we assume the previous one was optimal, so there's a contradiction, we have a, even a smaller expression. So that is a contradiction, meaning that xi is the minimum and yi is the maximum. And remember we assumed before q is larger than p? Had we swapped that, then xi would be the maximum and yi would be the minimum. So. We have proven that the xi and yi must be the minimum and maximum possible in some order. Now, let's get back to our initial conditions. We remember the second condition being xi minus s times yi minus s is bigger than or equal to zero. This means that they have to have the same sign, meaning that xi and yi lie on the same side of s, meaning they are both bigger than or equal to or both smaller than or equal to s. This means that if x is really big, then we can let one of them be 0 and the other be ai, which will be the smallest and the largest possible. Else, since they have to be both be bigger or both be smaller, we can let one of them be s and the other ai minus s. Why? Well, if one of them is s and one of them is ai minus s, let's just assume that ai minus s is bigger. That means that if we try to re uh, reduce s, we can't because that means one of them will be negative and one of them will be positive, so the product is not bigger than or equal to zero. And yeah, so we can't actually, th those are the minimum of the maximum, and that same argument applies to if it's smaller than. So now we know what values will be the minimum and what values will be the maximum given S. So we can do DP to find out what is the most optimal way to arrange them. Dynamic programming. Let's min max i0 be the minimum value of the i'th, the x minus i and y minus i, the minimum value of that, and min max i1 to be the maximum value. And let dp i0 be the minimum sum of the first i terms, if we have chosen xi to be the minimum, 
and let dpi1 be the minimum sum of the first i terms if we have chosen xi to be the maximum value. Then we have the recurrence relation that will be shown in the video. This means that dpi0 is either the minimum sum if you had chosen the previous term to be minimum, so xi minus 1 is minimum, meaning that we have to multiply the y i minus 1 term, which is the maximum of the previous position, to this current term we have, the xi, which is the minimum because it's dpi 0, and or uh, vice versa. So if you had chosen the previous term to be maximum, then you have to multiply the minimum of the previous to the minimum of this current term. And dpi1 is the same, except the current position will be the maximum, not the minimum. So after we do this, we can just check dpn0 and dpn1, which one would be the maximum, and we can multiply just the n term by an, because that n term would have to multiply by that. And we just check which one is smaller and output the result. And we're done. Thank you, and stay tuned for more interesting and cool videos.